Now, after understanding what exactly apex trigger is and what are the different types of apex triggers, apex triggers are there, it's time to understand how we need to write down an apex trigger inside our Salesforce org. So, uh, it's very simple. We need to first understand the syntax of it. And here it is. So, syntax for writing down trigger is, we just need to start with trigger. It's again a keyword. Uh, after that, we have to write down the name of the trigger, which whatever name we want to give to that particular trigger, we can just write it down over there. This is exactly similar to how we create a class into Apex. Like, first we write down the class, and then the name of the class that we want to, like, yeah, whatever the name that we want to give to that particular class, we just write it down, write it down over there. After that, we uh, in triggers, it's a little different than class. How? Because a trigger is for a particular object, right? Whenever a, a change will happen in, a, in any particular record of an object, the trigger will get executed. So we need to specify that this trigger is for this particular object. And how can we do that? By just specifying on, and after on, we need to write down the API name of the object on top of which we are creating this trigger. So like let's say if uh, we are creating a trigger on account, we need to write down account in here. If we are creating a trigger on contact, we need to write in contact in here. If we are creating a trigger on a custom object called a student, then we need to write down student underscore underscore C in here. After that, uh, there will be parentheses. And inside the parentheses will be writing down the trigger events. And I'll tell you later on what exactly trigger events mean, but we need to write it down over here. What, like if there is a single event on which we want this trigger to be executed, we'll write down the single event, uh, single trigger event over there. And if there are multiple trigger events uh, on top, like, on which we want this code to be executed, then we'll write down all of the di different different trigger events in here, separated by a comma, right? And after that, curly braces, and here's the code block. Whatever code you want to execute inside this particular trigger, just write it down over here. And that's how simple writing down a trigger is. And by the way, if you just want to create an Apex trigger, all what you need to do in the developer console inside the setup, uh, inside the Salesforce org is, Go to file, click on new, write down apex trigger. And it will ask you on which S object, the object on which you want to uh, create the trigger, uh, just select the object in here and just write down the name of the trigger. It will automatically populate all of these values in here. So the name will come over here and the S object name that you'll select will come over here. And this is exactly the snippet that you'll be getting after creating an apex trigger inside your Salesforce org. And uh, one more thing that I would like to mention over here is, all of your Apex classes get stored with an extension of APXC and all of your triggers uh, inside your Salesforce or get stored with an extension .apxt. So this is how you can actually differentiate between an Apex trigger as well as a uh, Apex class inside the Salesforce org with the help of developer console of course. Now let's finally talk about trigger events. When we say events, these are some uh, like op database operations only which happen. And when we say trigger events, so these are different, different events on which we can execute different, different code. Like, let's take a, an example of uh, insert. So if you want to execute some code before inserting a record, so we'll go with before insert trigger event. If you want to execute some code after uh, inserting a record, then we'll go with after insert. So this is how trigger events help you uh, specify then on that on which event uh, you need to execute which code. You can have multiple uh, triggers onto a single object, by the way. And uh, but like depending on to the database operation or depending on to the event that is happening, uh, you have got the right to choose that which code needs to be executed and how you can differentiate between the different different events or different different database operations with the help of trigger events and uh, there are different, different types of trigger events let's check them out number one uh, before insert so if you want to execute a particular set of code or execute a particular trigger uh, or execute a particular code before inserting a record go for before insert uh, if you want to execute a particular code before updating a record not before inserting a record uh, then in that case you can go for before update if you want to execute a, uh, execute a code uh, before deleting a record, you can go for b before delete. Similarly, uh, like, like similarly like before triggers, there are after triggers as well. So if you want to execute something after inserting the record, uh, choose the trigger event as after insert. 
if you want to execute a code after updating a record choose after update if you want to execute a code uh, after deleting a record choose after delete and uh, if you want to execute some code after undeleting a record, undeleting is basically uh, restoring it back from the recycle bin, right? So if you want to execute some code at that particular time when you are restoring a record from a recycle bin back into your uh, back into your database, which you see in the list views and everything, uh, you can use this after undelete. Now, as you have understood what exactly trigger is, what are different types of triggers and what are different types of trigger events which are present over here, it is time to write down a trigger. And this is what we have got. Uh, here we have written down a trigger. Let me first explain it to you what exactly the requirement is uh, for which we have written down this trigger. Uh, so the requirement is to add or append limited to the name of the account which we are updating, right? So let's say there's a corporation called as uh, Acme. And uh, whenever we are updating a record of Acme, all what we want is uh, the name of the Acme should become as Acme limited, right? So the record, uh, whenever the record gets updated uh, of Acme account or uh, yeah, of not, not Acme account, but uh, whenever any account record gets updated, all what we want is to append limited at the end of the account name. That's all. It's, it's, it's actually uh, not a very good requirement to explain you. Uh, it's not actually a very good requirement to uh, like showcase the power of triggers, but it is very important to make it in an easy way so that you are able to understand it in an easier way. I hope you got it. Anyways, uh, coming back to here, trigger, again the keyword, name of the trigger is Apex trigger one It is on account object, and uh, the trigger event that we have written down over here is before update. So whenever we'll be updating a record, uh, like the name should be appended with, uh, appended with limited at the end of it. So that's all what we have written down over here. And uh, why do you think that I've used before update over here? Like here, like I, I should have all, uh, I mean, why I, sh I haven't used after update in here? What do you think? It's very simple. As I've explained it to you earlier as well, that in an after trigger, the record is read only. You cannot actually edit any value in the after trigger of the record or in the after trigger for the record which actually initiated the execution of the triggers because it's read only in the after triggers. So that's why I've written down before update. And this is again the scenario which I've explained uh, explained you earlier that uh, in which scenario you need to use before triggers and in which scenario you need to use after triggers. So if you want to just update a field value or if you just want to validate something, you can use the before triggers. So over here we wanted to update something, hence we have used a before trigger. So over here, uh, this is what I've written down. Account A is equals to trigger dot new. And then in the square brackets, it's zero, uh, which basically specifies the first record, uh, which actually initiated the, uh, which actually initiated the execution of this particular trigger. And uh, not diving deep into trigger dot new right now, because it's a context variable that we'll be understanding later on uh, yeah, in, in the series. So let's leave it right now in here only. Let's just understand that in this account A, uh, the Acme Corporation account record, which we were talking about earlier, uh, got registered. And all what I'm doing over here is A dot name is equals to A dot name plus limited. And that's it. This is all what I have written down in here. And uh, yeah, now let's just go and create a record called as Acme. And then let's update it. And then let's see that whether this trigger is working or not. Before uh, going on to the account tab and creating an account record and then watching uh, after updating the record that whether the trigger is working or not, we need to first check whether this particular trigger is active or not. By default, whenever you're creating, whenever you create an Apex trigger, it is active. But uh, I have created a lot of triggers onto account object and also onto the different objects. So I might have inactivated it. Uh, so that's the reason I'm checking it back again. Yeah, so it, I think it is inactive and yeah, as expected. So I'll just go on to edit and again, uh, in order to activate it back again, uh, you can go to the setup, uh, like just select Apex trigger and over here there is a value is active. You just need to check it and you just save it. Now this will be active, right? And let's see if there is any other record which is active onto account record. I don't want any other uh, trigger to be activated onto the account record right now because we'll be just verifying this one. 
I am in act like this apex trigger six one is uh, what I am inactivating right now onto the account object account May nineteen trigger. I'll just. Uh, inactive. I trigger main ID. Let me just inactive. Yeah. So on account object, there's only one active trigger, which is Apex trigger one, right? So I was just verifying it. Now let's go back uh, to the account uh, tab and let's just create a new account record. Here it is. New Acme. I think I don't need to add anything as uh, nothing is required in here. So the account name is Acme and it is created. Now what I'll do is I'll just edit something in here. Like let's say this is the rating warm and I'll just save it. See the account name got updated as Acme Limited. This is exactly what I was talking about when I uh, explained you the trigger and you can see it is working right now. So that means the trigger that we just wrote down is working perfectly. So after understanding how to write down a before trigger, it is time for us to understand how to create an after trigger and here it is. So in this trigger, what we have done is we have just written down trigger apex trigger three, which is the name of the trigger again on con on contact, which is uh, we want this trigger to be executed on. Uh, on the records of the contact object and the trigger event is after insert. So wh what that signifies is that whenever a record gets inserted into the uh, contact object, after that execute this particular code. Yeah, this one. So the code that we have written down over here does the following. Whenever a new contact gets created, uh, create a new account having the name uh, appended with and company like let, let me give you an example like let's say uh, we have created a new contact named as Jeff so if you have created a new contact named as, as Jeff so in that case a new account should get uh, created into the into the account object uh, as Jeff and company right so for that we have written down this code contact C is equal to trigger dot new again zero I will talk about this trigger dot new don't worry this is the, this is the like just after this video or just after this topic, we'll be talking about context variables and trigger.new is the first topic over there, don't worry. So after that, uh, account A is equal to new account, it's just a new account record that we have created or, a, an, or an S object that we have created in here. A.name is equal to C dot last name, which is the last name of the uh, contact that we have just created, which initiated the execution of this particular trigger. So like, let's say uh, we have created a record called as Jeff Brown. So for Jeff Brown, uh, the account which will get created is going to be Brown and company, right? And at the end of it, we have just inserted this record into the database. So let's just save this and go to our Salesforce org and create a new contact, right? I'll just create uh, Mr. Jeff Brown, right? And I'll just save it. And let's see in account, have we got some brown and company? Yes, we have got it. And when did this got created? Today itself, brown and company. So this is how an after insert or an after trigger works. And this is exactly how you need to write down an after trigger.